training with uh with Mikey is like the same way. So like you're trying Lose to pass, yeah. yeah. So you're like trying to pass his guard and like feet like little tiny feet like slip into places they normally wouldn't be able to because his legs are so short. <laughs> He's a fing genius too when you talk to and the And then guy. drills the rest of the yeah. other twenty three hours. Yeah, he drills twelve hours a day. Listen, that's where you get results. BJJ is for the tough minds. BJJ is for the bold. BJJ is for the brave. How do you make it to the top in the ever so competitive BJJ world? The one simple law champions understand is that true success doesn't come easy. So champions go the extra mile to win the shiny prize. The truth is becoming a BJJ champion is really no different. Jiu-Jitsu is one sport that requires sacrifices, necessary lifestyle adjustments, and taxing routines to ensure your body is in the right shape to compete. While our journey are all different, one thing is certain. You're surely not going to be a Jiu-Jitsu champion if you're lazy and unwilling to be committed. It's important to define what kind of athlete you are. While hobbyists learn jiu-jitsu for fun or as a form of self-defense, competitive athletes have to attach more seriousness to their training. They have to be more dedicated and spend more time on the mat, learning and perfecting different techniques. Number one, work on your mindset. Becoming a champion begins in your mind. It starts in your mind, then it gradually becomes your reality. Former world champion Gilbert Burns opened up on how many times he lost before he eventually won the 2011 IBJJF World Championship. I was doing college in Rio and then I decided right there on the college, I remember I was doing my first Jiu Jitsu tournament. I was training not as hard as I should, but I was training. I realized the guy was on the highest level like, and just lost the guy by a ref decision, by advantage. Next day, I went to the college looking, the, looking at my professor and like, like, what I'm doing right here? So my first thing was believe that I could do it, visualizing myself being a champion, winning the world champion. Second thing, we were making a plan how to get there. With that plan was training, drills, rest. Saw a little bit of supplementation because I had no money back then. Very, very tough moment. He always believed in himself and maintained his focus, training, and working hard until his efforts were rewarded with a world championship title. But the key takeaway from Burns' story is that he kept his winning mindset intact. You have to believe in yourself, just like Burns did. Believe that if you train hard and right, you will definitely be decorated in gold someday. The reason why most people lack confidence is because they fear bad, bad outcomes. If you're a strong guard player, you've got an excellent guard, but you're terrified of leg locks and your opponent has strong leg longs, you will shut down your own guard and won't play as freely and, and well as you normally do because you're afraid of the leg lock. Number two, train hard and smart. Victory will always remain a dream if you don't give good attention to training. You have to see training for what it is. Training is about skill development. You've got to understand you don't need to win every battle. You only need to win the battles that count. The battles that count are in the World Championship Finals. Think about that win. You're not going to be remembered for the battle you lost on Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. in some nameless gym with some guy that no one cares about. Training prepares your body to withstand the intensity of competitive matches. It also allows you to learn and master new techniques. So, when training, here are a few essential tips. Regularly attend classes and practice outside of the dojo. Focus on technique rather than relying solely on strength. Spar and roll with a variety of training partners to expose yourself to different styles and challenges. Set specific goals and break them down into manageable milestones that are not overwhelming or too exhaustive. Finally, take care of your body through proper nutrition, rest, and injury prevention. Jiu-Jitsu can be physically demanding. I'm a big believer in never being sore. You should train, and the next day you should wake up feeling good. Overall, whether rolling or drilling, it's important to train hard and smart. And for those who are a bit confused about the difference between drilling and rolling, drilling is basically learning a technique 
in improving your technical knowledge by practicing the same technique over and over till it becomes second nature. Rolling, on the other hand, is sparring with an opponent. Sparring is the closest you can get to a competitive fight while training, allowing you to check your level of preparedness. Number three, consistency is everything. I'm a big believer in consistency over intensity. If you're going hard every day, you're not really going hard every day. You can't go your max every day. You could sprint once or twice a week. The best sprinters in the world, they sprint once or twice a week because intensity by nature entails that you need to take a break. To become a champion, you have to be consistent in both training and competing. There will be days of low motivation, but you don't train only when you feel like it. It's important to develop a training routine and stick to it. Keep on rolling and drilling until the techniques become a part of you. Gordon Ryan, in an interview, said that his confidence comes from repeated success in the gym while training with other dangerous grapplers. This shows just how consistent Gordon is with his training. The mindset you have is f***ing incredible, and I gravitate to that. Is that something you've always had? Uh, yeah. Confidence is built in the gym. If I'm trying to hit an armbar in training, I hit 2 out of 10, I'm probably not going to be that confident when I go to competition. If I'm you know, working on a new move, or I'm working on that armbar, and I hit 8 out of 10, or 9 out of 10, or 10 out of 10 armbars, I'm like, okay, like I can do this. Number 4. Find the right coach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When it comes to finding a good coach, things can get a little confusing. Finding a coach isn't all about going in search of the best coach in the world, but it is more about finding the best coach for you. You need a supportive coach who can work closely with you, one that has good experience, but also the tolerance and maturity to create a positive training environment. Look for a coach whose methods you can understand and adapt to. A great coach doesn't need to have competed in the past to be awesome at coaching, as long as a coach has a very good knowledge of the sport knows how to pass on that knowledge, and you can connect with them easily, then you are all set. Number 5. Understand your strengths and weaknesses When starting out as a white belt, chances are high that you won't understand what your strengths and weaknesses are. This is because you are new to the sport and are yet to understand your body. However, after drilling and rolling for some time, you'll get to understand what you are really good at and what you need to work on. This ability to recognize your strengths and weaknesses is vital. So take out time to study what kind of fighter you are and what techniques come to you naturally during sparring. Also, study your weaknesses and work on getting better in those areas. Number six, know the rules of the game. We advise you to take out time to familiarize yourself with the basic rules of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as you prepare for competitions. Not knowing is risky as your opponent can use it against you. It's also worth noting that different competitions have different rule sets, whether it's the rules of the ADCC, IBJJF, EBI, or any other tournament. Getting familiar with the rules is a must. Number seven, make a game plan. The best fighters in the game usually go into a match with a game plan. They plan their approach and outline the technique they wanna use on their opponents. So before going into a match, you should know how you intend to start the match, whether with a takedown or guard pull. Know your grips, foot positions on the mat, and even the counters you intend to use. It's not wise to just walk onto the mat and start grappling without a plan. On the flip side, you also shouldn't walk in with a rigid plan. Draft out your plan and have alternatives because alternatives give you options to fall back to if your original plan doesn't turn out as expected. Number eight. Watch videos of top grapplers and incorporate their moves into your game. Another thing you want to do is study top grapplers and how they fight. You will learn a lot from watching the videos of these athletes and incorporating some of their techniques into your game. Number 9. Compete and Compete There is no better way to gain competition experience than by competing. No amount of drilling or rolling during training equates fighting in a competition the competition experience is entirely different. The fights in tournaments are way more intense than in training, and the adrenaline rush is definitely higher. Compete as much as your coach advises you to. Don't mind losing. Learn from your mistakes, improve your skills, and do not allow the losses to impact you negatively. You will get better with time. 
Only if you remain persistent and continue to work on yourself. Even the best athletes have losses, but they keep on competing. We hope you enjoyed this video. We would love to hear from you. Drop a comment, like the video, and subscribe to our page for more.